Well, the introduction is actually a lot of the time what tells us we're selecting the right books. Um, because, you know, we keep picking these books that we think are cool, and then having all these really famous authors, the, you know, you know, all the way from people like George Lucas, you know, Mike Moorcock, Piers Anthony, all the, um, F. Paul Wilson, all these, so ben, ben Boba. Ben Boba, mm -hmm. yeah, all these guys just coming out of the woodwork to say, oh my god, I love these books growing up, you know, or this book inspired me, or I always wanted to be like them, um, and to have them then be able to, like, help us really bring back a lot of things that were seminal. I mean, the idea with science fiction is, what we've always said with this line is, if science fiction is a legitimate genre, where is its history? Where are its classics? Um, and the answer is, like, a lot of people don't know science fiction past the last 30 or 50 years. You know, you ask them, you know, well, who started science fiction? And they say, well, Isaac Asimov, right? Um, George Lucas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's, there's all this great stuff that came beforehand, and that's why it's really neat to get to work with, you know, half the authors we talk to don't just say, like, yeah, I'd love to write an introduction. They say, oh, my God, have you heard of this one and this one? I mean, like, especially people like Mike Moorcock, who are just, you know, constantly yeah. calling out some oh, and, ideas. Oh, and Paul Wilson. Yeah. Uh, actually, and, and, and I got an email from Neil Gaiman the other day, when oh, did, really? saying that he'd like to write the introduction to... Um, a particular Henry Cutner collection, so we will discuss that with him. But, uh, but he he loves he loves the newest and the redesigned for Planet Stories, which we have no copies of here today. But uh, uh, beginning with the robots have been dead. Yeah, the, the, the most current um, Planet Stories that's just shipping out of the warehouse, so it probably won't be available on. Well, actually, it'll be available on sale here tomorrow. Uh, Someone put some in a box, but we don't know what happened to the box. <laughs> but anyway, we've done a redesign. We've made it look a whole lot like the uh, the original Planet Stories magazine, a, a double column inside, a new illustration for each of the short stories. It's called Robots Have No Tales by Henry Kuttner, originally published under the, the name of Lewis Paget, which Kuttner wrote uh, stories that, as Lewis Paget with his wife, uh, C.L. Moore, Catherine Lucille Moore. And you know, there's an, an, actually another tie-in to for gaming too, if you're if you're a, a Lovecraft fan, um, Catherine Moore and Henry Cutner met because they were both writing for Weird Tales. Cutner thought C. L. Moore was a guy and wrote him a fan letter, yeah. and then they kept corresponding. Eventually, got married, and then they wrote like they were a four-armed monster. One of them would type till they got tired, and the other one would sit down in the middle of the story. Uh, you probably know the last Mimsy, the, the movie, uh, is is the one that, that Cutner's best known for. Actually. The story that the last movie he came from was the Paget story, so it probably was Cutner and Moore as well. Um, it's fascinating to learn about all those. You know, when you're doing this work, you find out about like the use of pseudonyms, which we really don't think about so much these days. But you get people like Cutner and Sam Moore, where they've got you know 14 pseudonyms that they wrote under, um, and it's all because in the you know the conventions of the day, you know, you might say like editors believed that people wouldn't buy you know more than one story. Um, you know, they wouldn't buy a magazine if it had more than one story by a given person. So they would just change the name on the manuscript. And so you might end up with an issue of Planet Stories or whatever that was, you know, five different authors who were all the same guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, a, 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 a good example, Robert A. Heinlein wrote under the, also wrote under the name of Anson McDonald. The A in Robert A. Heinlein was Anson. And so if he had more than one story in the magazine, uh, you'd see a Robert A. Heinlein and an Anson McDonald. Uh, um, John W. Campbell, who I guess was best known for uh, editing Astounding in an analog magazine for 40 years. Uh, if he had more than one story, he wrote under the name of uh, Don A. Stewart, because that was his wife's maiden name, Donna Stewart. So, I mean, it, you, can, you can go through all the pulps and find all this, this really interesting stuff. And, and Moore and Kuttner wrote so much that they had three or four pen names. I say usually if you see Lewis Paget, it was something they wrote together. But uh, but with Robots Have No Tales, the new one, um, Catherine Moore says that, that she knows that she never wrote any of that. But. So we were able to put the original, put just Henry Petner on there. But And that has you know several introductions to it, actually, because there's an introduction by C.L. Moore from a previous edition as well. We really try to hold to the history of these while also presenting the uh, sort of a modern look on you know, in keeping with, with publishing all Mars, all planet stories all the time, um, this is 
this is the first time ever complete collected short stories of um, um, Northwest Smith, who was an influence in the creation of Indiana Jones. You can even tell by the name. And this was this was Catherine Moore's uh, character, um, uh, Northwest Smith, had most of adventures on his adventures on Mars. He was kind of a of an adventurer, or maybe a little bit of a ne'er do well. He had a few a few on Venus, yeah, yeah. Sm the smuggling and. And, and, and actually, I mean, these are set on Mars, but they're, they're actually really more horror stories, I'd say. But yeah, there's I mean, a there's strong Lovecraftian yeah, element in a lot of these, which is really fun to see. Um, and it's, it's actually, it's always fun with a lot of these when we uh, get around to putting together, you know, we when you open a book, you've got the little praise for page in the front where it's, you know, all the authors. Some of these people, it's just amazing where you open it up and it's, you know, you know, H.P. Lovecraft saying, well, I thought this was really quite good, which it turns out if you read much Lovecraft, he doesn't say that about a lot of people. Um, well, in the new one, Robots Have No Tales, we have the, the little blurb from Lovecraft where he thought that, he was saying that he thought that Cutner would outlast him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Else shined him. Yeah. Never more imaginative, clearly yeah. his work will stand the test of time. Yeah. yeah. And now, Cutter. basically, <laughs> nobody knows about him. Um, at least nobody in Lovecraft is everywhere. So. Yeah, exactly. So. And the best and the worst is if you read Chamblow in this book, that's the very first story that Catherine Moore ever wrote. And it, it is so good that it yeah. just, it's just it's embarrassing to think that someone could only get better from there. So. Yeah. But um, I, I kind of think maybe um, rather than, especially since Eric's not here, I'm sure he will have a, a monologue when he gets in. But um, I was kind of thinking maybe we could open it up and just, I want to find out, you're clearly sure. at the Planet Stories seminar. What are your thoughts on Planet Stories? What do you want to know about the line? What um, what do you like about the line if you've read them before? Um, so Why are you here? Yeah. And what, and what kind of stuff would you like to see as a print? Yeah. You know, whether it be older stuff or new authors doing yeah. something. Yeah. I mean, I think in terms of the last question, what would you like to see? I mean, I would like to see some more roots of fantasy specifically. I mean, it's it, there's a, a blurred line between fantasy and sci-fi from the early times, but you know, seeing things that are more distinctly fantasy and maybe even more distinctly sci-fi where, they, where they're not blended would be cool as well, because I think there's a market for both, obviously, with the, with the line. And you know, it's interesting, we've sort of thought, um, We've always sort of been curious about where exactly to take the line, because originally we thought very much Sword and Planet was exactly what we wanted to do. Um, and we continued to sort of focus on that, but also to think about just what is historically significant science fiction and fantasy. Um, and you know, that's why we've got mixed in with all you know these older classics. We've got pulp stuff, we've got sort of newer stuff. And then we've got stuff like you know um, Infernal Sorceress, which was the last the last novel Gary Gygax wrote, and it was actually languished, unpublished for years. Um, it was one of those things where he had written it and then shoved it away in a drawer because people didn't like it or something. Um, and then right before he died, he got the permission to re republish it. Yeah. And so it's never before been seen. Um, and you know, this is one of those things where it's not old particularly, but it's really important because here you've got a guy who essentially defined fantasy for a generation. I mean, you know, Tolkien, yes, you know, Tolkien and Fritz Leiber and those guys were huge, but Dungeons and Dragons, I think we can safely say, is the reason we're all here. Um, like, I think he's done so much to popularize fantasy that to be able to see directly, sort of, from the horse's mouth, what his concept of a fantasy world was is hugely um, historically significant.